Fernandez, and today I'm going to talk to you about AIDS in my community and how it affected me. Um, AIDS has been very close to my family. Um, my cousin is married to a beautiful man. His name is Johnny, and he had a he had a brother that died of AIDS, along with a cousin um, that died of AIDS. I grew up with them as a child. Um, they were part of my family and um, very ambitious people, nice. Um, unfortunately, we both um, died of AIDS, but different times. They met at the same time, but not that far apart. Um, they were both male and they were both gay. Um, one of them was a hard worker and, and he was involved in his own work. Um, I remember him being such a sweet person and a family man. Um, he passed away. Um, he passed away, and shortly after that, I believe his partner passed away as well. Um, my other cousin, on the other hand, was on, he was on drugs, um, and AIDS was eating away at him. And because he was on drugs, it was more painful, I believe, because he kept he continued taking drugs. I guess that was a way to escape. And I remember him being so bold. Um, he would go out in like these short, short shorts and cut off his, you know, pants and make a lot of holes in them. And he would be at the beach catching sunburns. Like, you know, at the end, he really didn't care about himself. And it was sad because everybody loved him. I remember sometimes some people in the family treating him different. Um, oh my God, he came to take out the paper cups. I mean, not my family because we don't like that, but of his family, I saw them doing that a few times, which was saddening me because they didn't realize what AIDS was about because it was a new, well, it felt like a new disease to our world, and um, I believe it's probably been out for ages. Anyway, to say, to cut, you know, to cut it short, he passed away, but the last thing I remember of him is his smile. I'm always the, I'm always the photographer, and um, I took the last few pictures of him, and I also went to the hospital when he was dying, and the last things that he said to me was, don't cry, because you're too beautiful. Um, and all he kept holding my hand. It was sad because he wasted away. He, he was basically like 180 pounds and he wasted away to like 75 pounds. So um, that, it has affected um, affected us a lot. And um, I definitely don't you know, wish it, on it upon anybody. So I would say safe sex and try your best to, you know, try to be safe out there with any, any diseases. But this is a, a disease that eats you away. So it's something to think about. Thank you. A thousand people in NYC don't find out they're HIV positive until they're already sick with AIDS. Out of sight, out of mind isn't a means for a cure. Over 100,000 New Yorkers are living with HIV right now. These numbers pertain to AIDS in my community. I don't know anybody personally who has AIDS. I never had the experience of actually meeting anybody with AIDS that I knew of. But it does still affect our community. When I was younger, I had AIDS education classes in school. I think most people in our age group have had that, but like people of my mom's generation, they didn't. And there's still this big misconception about how you get AIDS. Like my mom, for example, won't sit on a public toilet seat ever, but she's afraid of getting AIDS. And as many times as I told her, mom, you can't get AIDS by that kind of contact. She just doesn't get it. My mom also has a gay friend, and like she won't hug him or touch him or like, have any physical contact with him, she's afraid, like, oh, what if he was with someone who had AIDS? So I think among, like, older people, there's some misconceptions about how you get AIDS, and there needs to be more education for everybody, not just for students and younger people. There needs to be more enforced that you can't get AIDS through regular contact with people. Well, it's me, Gil Gallard, from speech class. Um, as we know that AIDS, it kills a lot of people every year, and, um, my friend's uncle had it, and um, it affected him in a lot of ways. Ever since he had it, um, he was unemployed and had to get out of work just to get treatment, and treatment was very expensive. And so, I mean, right now I don't know what's going on with him and the treatment. So, but yeah, like my main point is like, it really affects the community, and yeah, it causes a lot of deaths. That. When they hear the word HIV, right away they think of, oh, it could be transmitted right away. Like you touch a person and you get sick and the disease spreads to you. Well, it isn't like that actually, but people just, just judge something by their cover, you could say. 
Um, I work in a lab, so there is a lot of people that have HIV. And my experience is that when I saw that there was a positive HIV in another patient, I just blanked. I was like, oh my god, I'm holding a specimen of a person that has, a has H HIV. And thank god I had gloves and everything that I didn't get affected. So the thing is that from my own experience, I don't really blame some people for doing that. But then, like, you never know what people might go through. You know? And HIV is a really, really, uh, really, uh, scary sexually transmitted disease. And it can go through blood and everything. And people are really scared for getting it. And if I saw, if people in my community were to comment on this, when they would say that, it scares them in a way. We're rolling. Is it possible we're that how does, Yeah, yeah, how does AIDS affect your community? Check, take one. <laughs> I was once told that the worst part of the HIV and AIDS virus is not knowing your status. And by that, I took it as meaning an individual that doesn't know that he's affected, infected can infect others. Um, they have the terminology, the down low brother, who is a, a, a person, a male that presents himself as being straight but involves himself in homosexual activities and affects my community, your community, all communities, sisters, mothers, nieces, aunts. Um, I do know a few individuals that are HIV positive. Um, for whatever reason, whether it's drug use or blood transfusions or unprotected sex, um, for the most part, my community, I would expect to just grow and evolve. And although HIV and AIDS is not a death sentence, it does bring major complications to one's life. So my advice to all is to wrap it up and get checked out so you can know your status. Thank you. A strong topic within our community. I'm not personally like affected by it or can or know anyone who is, but it still affects me and concerns me because of how many people have the virus and how much is growing every year and how many people die from it. I feel that we all like need to come together as a community and be more careful and practice like safe sex and like just work together with it to stop this madness. It's crazy. Like a lot of people are dying from it. And I would hate to like think or like that one of my family members can be affected by it or someone I loved and cared about. So I think we all need to come together, get tested, practice safe sex and do whatever we can to stop this. Hey, what's going on? My name is Carlos Villavicencio. Um, today is November 29th, 2010. Um, I am going to share with you a little story about what I know about AIDS. Um, it's something that it's been in my family. Um, I've lost a couple of relatives due to it. Um, it's a very nasty, ugly disease, a virus. And one of the main focuses is to um, prevent it. Um, protection is the best way, I feel. Um, it's an epidemic that is affecting the world. Like I said, it's affecting my family already. And I wouldn't doubt if it's affecting um, somebody from the viewing party. Um, also, um, it's a disease that it's uncurable yet. Um, it's stabilized, but incurable. Um, I hope that one day in the future there is enough remedy to actually overcome this nasty disease and have a better outlook on society itself. Thank you. Um, people look at you differently and people around you become a risk. 